Hi, this is Mike Hibbert back again with another Python Django tutorial for you. Um, this time we're going to cover a little bit about authentic authentication and using the users um, part of Django. Now, um, Django comes with a built-in user management system that helps you to deal with logins and registrations and logging out um, and various different groups and properties and permissions that users can have in your website. Um, now, this comes to be very useful when you start building websites where you can put in restricted areas or, you know, if you want to pe have people uh, use the site, but then record the various things that they do on the site. For instance, like on a social network, you might want to, you want to record who clicked like on a particular article or something like that, then uh, that'll turn out to be very valuable to you to have that sort of capability. Now, the first thing that we do normally is we, we go to the settings files and make sure that certain things are available if need be, and this is no exception. Um, the, the user authentication system is contained in a package called django.contrib.auth. And we need to make sure that this is actually enabled in our installed apps section. If it is already installed, then just leave it as it is. And if it's not there, then you need to type it in and, and put that in the, in the list or uncomment it if it's commented. The next section that we also need to look at is the middleware classes section. Because we also have some, in, to, some modules to pull in that will help us to deal with the auto authentication system. And that's middleware dot authentication middleware and that helps us to deal with the uh, the actual process of storing things in the back end so last week we uh, last time we, we did our tutorial we discussed cookies and sessions and um, this middleware is our, is the system that actually uses that uh, capability so in learning how we did that last time we've actually come to understand more or less how the authentication system works here so um, with that done inside of our settings.py uh, file, we don't need to do anything more than that. Um, the next thing we need to do is to make our website aware of where we can go uh, in terms of URLs for this authentication system. Now this URLs uh, file that I'm dealing with here is the URLs file you'll find inside of the Django test module if you followed along with the series. Um, it's not the URLs one that you will find inside of the articles app. It's inside of our Django test. So this is the main site-wide version um, as opposed to the one that's only specific to this uh, particular module that we've build, been building for articles. So this one, the one that's site-wide, we're going to put it into there because authentication URLs aren't really part of a package as such. They, not that you couldn't make them into that, um, but in this case, I'm making them specific to this website. So we add in the URLs and here we have uh, accounts login, which passes through to our Django test uh, module folder goes into the views file and looks for a method called login. Same here, we have an auth uh, URL that will map through to an auth underscore view um, method. And notice I've used an underscore there because auth is kind of a restricted word, word when it comes to um, the actual names of methods and that sort of thing. So it's not a good idea to, to name your, your method auth because it will clash with modules and that sort of thing. So that's why I've put that underscore view there. You might like to make it a practice of making underscore view on the end of every view name method name you, you have. It, it's up to you. It's really you know a, a matter of preference. Um, and then we have logout, logged in, so and invalid. So the logged in and invalid uh, URLs will just basically pass us through a page saying you're now logged in 
or your password or username wasn't valid please try again that sort of thing so there's five new uh, URLs that we've set up so we need five new methods to deal with that inside of our Django test folder we have a new file the views file now we do have a views file in the articles folder which we were using in the previous examples but we're gonna make these site-wide views so these should be available um, just in this site and you know unless you want to package it up and use it in a different site it's gonna stay right here and be specific to this particular website that we're building so in that views file we're gonna add some stuff in to help us to make our new login and logout and the other responder URLs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in our old friend the render to response method which basically allows us to uh, render a template um, back to the browser. Then we're going to pull in a new module that we haven't seen before um, the django.http HTTP response redirect uh, object and this basically allows us to redirect the browser to a different URL it's very simple to use and as you'll see in a, in a minute it's 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 an absolute doddle to, to set it up and know how to work with it the next bit we want to do is now pull in our auth met or our auth object from Django contrib and that will take care of checking our username and passwords and actually confirming that the user has logged in or alternatively logging out. So here we go. The, le the next and uh, final module that we're going to pull in is um, an unexpected one because it's Django Core Context Processors. And the, mo the object we're going to pull in is CSRF. Um, if you know a little bit about web security, then you'll know CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery, which is basically a method for people who are a bit dodgy to try and hack into your website or to cause your website to do unexpected things by pretending uh, that some submitted form that they've generated is from your site. And the way that you stop that from happening is to use CSRF module to embed a, a special code or token into your forms that only your website can confirm or correct and then you can kind of sidestep the issue of people trying to forge uh, requests to your site um, if you want to know more about that a, a good place to start is google and go and uh, type in what that is and it'll give you the whole nine yards about what it's all about but for the sake of uh, our tutorial I'm not going to take it any further than that other than to show you what to actually do with the token that's generated in your form so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the login URL or login uh, view method we're going to create a dict called C and we're going to push into it a CF a CSRF uh, object and then pass it through to our login HTML template. I'm going to pass that through as an argument to there. The reason for that, if I take you over to the login HTML file to show you what the contents of that is, um, we're going to use that to embed the CSRF underscore token, which basically equates to being a hidden form field with a string in it. And the string is a unique URL or string rather. So this is what will be checked when we post back to the URL and it will be confirmed as being valid or invalid to protect our site from being abused. <clears throat> so as you can see the rest of this template is just basically extending the base HTML that we did in our templating uh, tutorial. We're defining a content block through here and everything inside uh, is just basically us dealing with what the form should do. A little bit to say that uh, the username and password was invalid. Uh, to be fair, that's not going to get used, so we'll just ignore that for the time, time being. 
the main points are that we have our form declared and we're saying that the action is actually to post through to the auth URL using the post method the token the username and the password so we've set up our security mechanism and then we've got a form that just basically collects the username and password and passes it through to our auth URL going back to our views file we're now we'll look at what the auth URL does our auth view uh, first of all goes into the request and looks for the post information from the form and gets a username and a password notice on the end here we've got an empty string now what that means is if we're looking into the post dictionary and we don't get a value out for the username because it doesn't exist yet then we'll have a an empty string returned into our variable um, and at least that won't break our script and it will uh, it'll, will allow our authentication methods to still work although they'll come back as invalid password or whatever um, it's just a nice way of saying um, if you can't find a value at least return something so that's what that end part means the next section is our our main check so we're going to say use the auth object that we imported earlier and use its authenticate method we're going to pass over the username and password into there it will go away and check that and if it finds a match it will return to us a user object if it doesn't find a match it will return to us none so it will say this is there there are none found so from that once we've done that check we can then deal with it so we're going to say if the user is not none so we found one use the auth object and actually set the login status of our user to logged in so notice we did an authenticate there but that didn't actually say yes this user is now logged in it just said yes this user ju exists within the system and the password that it has been passed in is correct the login method itself is the way that we actually say we want this user to be st signified in our system as logged in now once we've done that we use our new object HTTP response redirect and we pass it a URL to be passed to, to be redirected to which is logged in and that basically just give us gives us uh, the following um, a little message saying hi full name logged in or we could say you are logged in you are now So, and then we just put another link there saying click here to log out just so we can kind of bounce back and forth between the URLs and test it out. So, that's what happens if we found a user. If we haven't found a user because user came back equal to none, then we're going to redirect away to the accounts invalid URL. And the invalid URL is basically just saying your login details are invalid. Click here to log in again. And that's all that does. The next part of this is to basically go and set up the rest of our smaller um, view handlers for our URLs. So the main bulk of, the, of what goes on is actually in here that's the most complicated part of the code so the next few URLs uh, logged in just basically renders the logged in HTML and passes through that full name um, variable that we then embed inside of there and in this case we use this new uh, part of the system which is called user and it has a member variable called username 
Now, if you if you look up request to dot user, um, you'll get all the different properties, etc., on the internet. Um, I'll be using more different features uh, in in future tutorials, but for the sake of just introducing you to the idea of the request having a user member variable that then has um, various properties and that you can use them by passing them in as variables to your views that gives you a, a little bit of a, an idea of what's possible there are there are loads more uh, pieces of information you can pull out of there you can even pull out the first name and, sec and second name of people um, or you can have it you know pulled back as one full name um, it's up to you and there's other other features but you know, if you're really interested in that go and have a, a look further or wait for some of my future tutorials where I'll show you some of the other aspects of that now the next few URLs are very simple we've got invalid login which just basically renders the invalid login template and then we have our logout and then in this case we're using our auth object to just basically log out using this request which stores our information about who's currently logged in and then we're just basically rendering our logout HTML file okay so that's pretty much all of our code done because we've now introduced the authentication system we need to now update our database because the user authentication system creates tables in your database that deal with the users uh, to store their names and their email addresses and their passwords and all that sort of stuff so to update first before we actually run our server we need to type um, python manage.py sync db and that will synchronize the database with any of the currently used and registered modules that we've got in our settings.py so our settings.py will go to our install apps and see that we've got auth and it'll go away find out what auth needs in terms of data tables and that sort of thing and it and synchronize the database um, it'll probably say yeah it has it said installed zero objects from zero fixtures etc because I've already done this um, in yours you'll see a slightly different message and if you don't then you'll you'll know some, something's wrong and uh, please feel free to put some comments in the box below and uh, we'll see if we can help you out in any way so that's the synchronization done the next thing we need to do is just basically run the server and that theoretically should be okay uh, famous last words yeah as you can see I've already tested it here so let's go to the login page so login that's our two boxes username and password uh, unfortunately my browser has already stored my password so let's have a go at that and see that it confirms the login properly yeah hi Mike you are now logged in awesome click here to log out you are now logged out awesome let's put the wrong password in there uh, hamster that'll do your login details are invalid so it now knows that what to do in the case of me being successful with my login and unsuccessful and we also have a nice URL to go to when we log out again so that's the end of this tutorial I hope that you enjoyed that and it was helpful to you um, if you did like this video then please click the like button and if you'd like to see more in the series then please uh, click the subs subscribe button if you have any more ideas for other tutorials or you'd like to ask any more questions about the one you've just watched then please leave a comment below in the box below and thanks for watching